First Kings chapter 16. Then the word of the Lord came to Jehu, the son of Hanai, against Bashan. Now remember, Bashan's come in, he's killed the king, taken over, and he's gone after the ways of uh, Jeroboam, the false religion. He hasn't improved. He's only gotten worse. So with that, God sent another prophet, another against. For as much as I exalted thee out of the dust, that's where man came from, dust. It's what we are, what we go back to. So who are you? Who do you think you are? Everybody thinks higher themselves. Listen, you're a dirt ball. And if God didn't give us life, we still be dirt. And made thee prince over my people Israel. I gave you the opportunity to take over. I gave you the opportunity to, to have the throne. And thou hast walked in the ways of Jeroboam. That's why you went after the family. That's why you destroyed them. The ways of Jeroboam. You were supposed to do right. Instead, you just went on with sin. And has made my people Israel to sin. I put you in that throne. I put you to get rid of Jeroboam to do right. And you got the people doing wrong. You got the people sinning. To provoke me to anger with their sins. That false religion that we talked about with Jeroboam. The golden calves. The set up priests that are not the right priests. The altars. The groves. The it's anger God. It's anger God. It's anger God it's to the point is where you remove commandments so you can have your idolatry. Isn't there something wrong with that? Behold, I you see why religion does not want you in the Bible? You see why there are modern Bibles today? If you have somebody who has a religion, well, if I pick up a new Bible that, that oh, maybe God's not angry in a new Bible. Man, he's just upset. Then you can go about your business. If you can remove God, which new Bibles have, or change God. Man thinks they can change God. Well, you know what? God allows it. For the great white throne judgment, you're going to find out that God's unchangeable. So God put this man in position. Now, just because nothing. Oh, I'm called of God. Don't think because everyone is called of God and brought in by God will do the service of God. Basha was called by God to go in and clean up Israel. Get rid of the troublemaker, Jeroboam. Get rid of that religion. I don't know, maybe the, maybe the people of Israel say, God bless America, uh, uh, Israel, but one nation under Israel. <laughs> And this guy's coming and done just as worse as America's done. Listen, we started off right. We came over here with the Geneva Bible. And then we started persecuting. We started taking property. We started locking up. We started killing people just as it was happening to their fathers in England. And we started killing the Indians for the land. We're no better. The city on, on the, of lights is not. This guy has gone against it, And this is the story of America. They had done worse than what was going on in England. Behold, I will take away the posterity of Basia, just like Jeroboam, and he and the, yeah, and the posterity of his house, and will make thy house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. And just go on. Remember when, when Jeroboam told his wife, dress up for Halloween and go to the prophet and, and find out about our son and you know what's going to happen to him? He says, listen, that child is going to, going to be the only one that's going to die right. Everybody else is going to die in a the field. They're going to be eaten. They die in, in the city. They're going to be eaten. And Basia did that as God had allowed him to do. Him that dieth of Basia in the city shall the dogs eat. That's what happened to Jeroboam. That's the prophecy of Jeroboam. And him that dieth of his in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. That's the same thing. So Basha, though he did the word of God, though he obeyed God getting rid of Jeroboam, he went in the same sins of Jeroboam. So he gets the same 
judgment. Don't go to God. Oh, God, am I a good boy? I, I did what you told me to do. I did it in the name of religion. Same thing. You, you get the same hell. Now, the rest of the acts of the and that and what he did and his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? So Basha slept with his fathers and was buried in Tarza, that's the set up city that he had, and Elah, his son, reigned in his stead. And going to be another wicked king. No king in Israel ever did right. There were a few good kings in Judah, but never Israel. And also by the hand of the prophet Jehu, the son of Hananiah came to... <coughs> Excuse me, the word of the Lord against Baasa and against his house, even all the evil that he did in the sight of the Lord, in provoking him to anger with the work of his hands, and being like the house of Jeroboam, and because he killed him. And the name what you can put under the classification of Jeroboam, which is carried over by Baasa, is the definition of religion. No matter what name you call it, it's religion. And God hates it. In the 20 and 6th year of Asa, king of Judah, that's down south, began Elah, the son of Basha, to reign over Israel in Tarzah, the set up kingdom, two years. So, when Asa has been king 26 years, now Elah sets up, and he has a two-year reign. And his servant Zimri, this is under the king, nobody of importance, servant, captain of half his chariots, and not all his chariots, just half of them, conspired against him as he was in as he was in Tarza, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arza, steward of his house in Tarza. That, that, Proverbs says a king ought not to be drinking. The wise of a, the wise words of a mother to her son. It ought not to be for kings to be, to be drinking. I mean, Bible definition. Does the Bible actually come out and say, thou shalt not drink intoxicating liquors? No, it does not. Not even the New Testament. Now, if you want to be a bishop, it does. Deacon, you can have a few. But isn't there enough written about what happens with intoxicating liquor to say no? Does not you cannot see the troubles and problems that intoxicating liquor causes to families, innocent people who are not even involved with that liquor? Can't you just see enough that it's terrible? Can't you see something? People cry baby against the government. Oh, the government does this, the government does that. But can't you see something as the government is for alcohol? They promote alcohol. Would you say enough that there's got to be something wrong with it if the, if the government says it's okay? This man is drinking himself drunk. He, he, so, he has no stance of what's going to happen. He has no, no control of himself. And Zimri went in and smote him and killed him in the 27th year of age the king of Judah. Again, there's the two years. And reigned in his stead. This guy, I mean, I, I got you got to ask yourself, if he was not intoxicated, how far would Zimri go? Would Zimri be the one on the ground dead? The fact is, intoxication caused this man to be dead. He would have his senses. He would have ability to fight. He had the ability to do something. It just look. He said he went in and smote him and killed him. It doesn't even say there was a battle. It doesn't even say there was a conflict. He just walked in the building. Boom! You're dead. And why is it upon the son, Elah? Oh, he's just doing what his father Basha has been doing. And that's where we looked at. I think a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of days ago, we looked at the fact is where it said the sins of idolatry will be from the father to the son to the to the to the sun's sons. Why? Because you raise your children up in that. And the fathers have got to realize 
I'm going to stand before God one day, okay? A father. You're going to stand before God not only for yourself, but you're going to stand before God as a husband to the wife that you married. You're going to give account for that. And then you're going to have to give account to your children. And what you taught your children. Now, what you taught your children, are your children going to be teaching their children as their children be teaching their children? you got to realize sins and wickedness and judgment carries on to generations. Men are both saved and lost are going to be quite shocked at what the judgment is going to be for them. At the judgment seat of Christ and the great white stone judgment, they realize... You mean, it's just, the Bible says every idle word. The Bible says every look, every thought. Fathers, everything you do, or everything you didn't do that you're supposed to do. And the children are carried over in the kings, and there's one thing you learn from the, from the kings of Israel. Setting off with Jeroboam. And we are... Two or three generations away from Jeroboam. What has been taught by Jeroboam that now comes on to Elah, though it's not his son. Baish is not the son of Jeroboam, but what has been carried through? What is going on? That stupid religion. Baisha picked it up. And here's Elah, the son of Baisha. He has that religion. We tried a different family. And remember, Jeroboam was of Ephraim. And we went through his son, and, well, still the religion. God sent a total different man. I think uh, Basha was Naphtali, I think. All right, let's try another family. Well, we kept the religion. Now let's look at Elah, the son of Basha. What has he done that his father's taught him? Keep the same religion. And what is the result? God is angry. God is causing judgment. Religion is not the answer. And it came to pass when he began to reign, this is Zimri, as soon as he sat on his throne, that he slew all the house of Basha. This is the same thing Basha did with Jeroboam. Had he gotten rid of that religion, had he got rid of those calves, had he gotten right with God, this would not have happened. So he's reaping what he's sowing. All you were now, Basha, you're a murderer. Because God called you to get rid of Jeroboam. God called judgment upon Jeroboam to get rid of that religion. You didn't do it. You did not obey God. You defiled God. You angered God. You're just a murderer. That's all you did. Now, had you gotten right with God and be like, hey, you've done what God told you to do. You, could be, you can't be blessed. He left not one that pisses against the wall, neither of his kinfolks, nor of his friend. Now look at that one, his friends. Now we went outside the family now. It's a whole cuddled mass of people serving. And that's the whole thing with religion. It's their friends, it's their family. Thus did Zimri destroy all the house of Basha, according to the word of the Lord. Now see? Now that's where people will get your, your, oh boy, as soon as I want to say the word came on. Your jihad. There's right there. There's your Bible jihad. We're going in the name of God. We're going to kill people in the name of religion. I mean God. God never called any Gentile. God has never called anybody in the church to go out and kill anybody. Now, when I say with the government, with the thing loud religions, I never promote any Christian to go out there and kick statues over, go kill priests, or kill anybody in the religion. I promote going all the world and preach the gospel. But the government has a charge to get rid of religion. We're not called, we are nowhere called by God anywhere in the New Testament to go killing with a sword or anything. We are called to go preach the word of God. Go preach the gospel to the lost people. If they will receive, amen, glory to God, you help grow them. As Paul did with Timothy. If they won't receive it, you go to somebody else. Now, we got something quite backwards going on in the world today as Christians. We want to be in gun control. We want to carry a weapon. We want to shoot. We want to take the sword literally. Didn't Peter, didn't he say, well, there's two swords here and Jesus says it's enough? Name me one place in the book of Acts or in Paul's writings where they ever killed anybody. 
Show me. And Paul says the pearls of robbers. Paul was out on journeys, and Paul had robbers come up to him, stick them up, or whatever they do with the sword. He didn't kill them. He didn't shoot them. I guarantee where Paul was, I guarantee he witnessed to him. Maybe got a few of them saved. We were put in prison for the word of God. We were tortured for the word of God. Religions kill Christians for the word of God. We don't kill anybody. Christians. For land, for whatever. There is no word of God for the born again Bible believing Christian that God was there to go down there and kill them. That's not us. That's Satan. And when you go to, to an to the Old Testament and do your jihad in the Old Testament, you are in the Old Testament, you are not in the New. Because it can't be found by any of the apostles, anybody in the church. Now you got one wicked church out there that's been persecuting Christians, have been persecuting people, have been stealing land, have set forth inquisitions, have set forth killing people to get property. But aren't they the merits of the people of the Old Testament? Don't they? Have we not seen their religion in the Old Testament? And yet they lie to you and claim we are of the foundation of Jesus Christ and the apostles. All right. Where did Jesus and the apostles declare war? You realize Jesus Christ has conquered nations, he has conquered souls of men, and he never used a, a, a physical sword. He has tore down families and, and patched them up and built them up by his word and his word only. He has defiled Satan by men believing on him and getting right and doing right. There's no sword. There's no gun. And the fact is, oh, somebody's coming to threaten us. Somebody's going to come in our church and threaten us. That is church history. They came in the garden. They had staves. They had swords. They had lanterns to come and get Jesus. He didn't pull his 45 out. and bleh. He said, let the disciples go. Here I am. And then they will go around with the gun holders, have this bracelet. What would Jesus do? He wouldn't carry a gun. He wouldn't carry a sword. He gave himself. They trusted in God. Peter's on execution. He's in jail. He's locked up. He's going to die. He's going to lose his head just like James did. He's laying in there and angels Lord said, I ain't done with you. Come on out. Paul is stoned to death for preaching. Nobody takes up rocks themselves. And God tells Paul, I ain't done with you. Get back up. Get going. Thus did the Zimri destroy all the house of Basia according to the word of the Lord. That's not going to be found. We're not going to destroy no houses. Which he spanked against Basia by Jehu, the prophet. You know, you know what God told me to do as far as the Catholic Church? We, uh, I'm thinking about right now. I'm looking at ministry right now. Is Go to them and tell them about the real gospel. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Expect to be persecuted. But don't you do the persecute. Go down and preach to the people, and they're going to harass you. You don't harass them. You pray for them. And But for all the sins of Basia and the sins of Elah, his sin. So see, look. It's not Elah being persecuted for his father. Elah was doing the same things as his father. And probably works. Things don't get better. Things get worse. By which they sinned, and by which they made Israel to sin. So they're just making, come on people, let's do it. Let's have a national dance in the streets and promote your sexual sins. Let's go out and just promote wickedness. Let's just put out in the school and teach children that the proper thing of God, that there is no male and female. Let's teach everybody. That's what's going on in America today. They're teaching Americans to sin. And if my Bible's correct, there's coming a day of reckoning. There's coming a day of judgment. It happened to Sodom. It happened to Israel. It happened to Judah. It happened to Babylon. It happened to Greece. It's happening to Rome. It's happened to, to England. Don't you think America is not going to be? Don't you think that there's New Jerusalem and America? You're foolish. We're in the church age today that matches the Bible. Blech. Gross. That's sickening. Where churches, the altar, the sacred altars become a stage. This is what's going on here. They're making all the people, they're making Christians sin today. 
in provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger. I want to be in those shoes. Can you imagine making God angry? You know, when, when, when people were provoking God angry, he says, listen, I'm fed up. I'm had it. I'm done with you, God. <sighs> Noah, come here. Build yourself a boat. Prepare your family. I'm, they're gone. They're all gone. But you get on that boat. And you preach to those people. And you tell them that door is open. They're going to hate you. They're going to despise you. They're going to make joke books about you. They're going to threaten you. You just build that boat. That ark. Jeremiah. They're all going to be against you. Your own city people are going to try to kill you. Because God was angry. God gets angry. With their vanities. Now what's that? That's the religion. That's not serving God. That's not the, the Levite priesthood, the, the one brazen altar, this place that's set up in Jerusalem and where God says the feast day. That's their own feast days. That's their let's let's have before we have 40 days of, of fasting and we can't have this, let's have one complete weekend of glorious sexual cartography. <laughs> Let's make a God and put them on dashboards of cars. And then we find out, oh my God, look at all the junkyards with cars with that guy in the dashboard. He's a failure. Put him in, put that guy away. He ain't protecting the people. That's vanity. That's nothing. Vanity means nothing. God says, as far as his religion of Jeroboam, of all greatness, to write down the word of God that will never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. Write it down. All that is nothing. You want to put it in a modern Bible word? Nothing. Nothing. It says a lot. Oh, look at the greatness of science is doing in, in, in New Jerusalem. So what? Who cares? You made it to Mars. Wow, so good. You realize I'm gonna, one day is if I'm going to get the body like Jesus Christ, I'm going to be able to go through walk. I'm going to go through doors. I'm going to a place where there's never going to be no darkness, no shadow, complete light everywhere I go. Happiness. I'm going to a place that where, where doctors want, where there's no more pain and no more suffering, no more disease by God the Father. While doctors are still practicing. Now the rest of the acts of Elah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles, the kings of Israel? In the 27th year of Asa, now, look how many kings are going through Asa. Now, this is a king that was right, and then he got wrong. He got angry with God. But look, look at all these kings. You know what that tells you? Now, remember when we studied Asa the other night? All right, he was right. And he got high in the head. He started relying on other people. He went to the checking account of the temple and to the savings account of his kingly uh, treasures and said, come on, I'm going to hire you. Help me, not God. Help help me no more. I mean, he did the Ethiopians, but he can't do it no more. I'm not going to put my trust in God no more. God sent him a prophet. He said, no, nah, you're going to jail because shut up. I don't want to hear it no more. Oh, my aching feet. Doctors, help me. Now, what do we get out of all this? While Ace is doing right and he's going down the road of wrongness, of sin, he is hearing the news of, I don't know what kind of news people were there, but he's hearing the news of Israel. They've got this religion. And this religion is killing their kings. He has heard that Baish has come in and destroyed Jeroboam, which was the enemy of Asa. Wow. Don't want to have anything to do with that God. That God can't do nothing. He is learning the fact that now here's Elah. He's come to the throne. And with two years by the religion of Basha and Jeroboam, that got him killed while he was intoxicated. Well, intoxication and that religion doesn't work. Do you know there are some churches with that type of religion? They actually have hooch as the Lord's Supper. For his blood. His holy blood, the blood of God, Acts 20, 28. They actually have intoxicating liquor. They need a liquor license for their mass. Now, Asa, while this is all going on, he should be thinking in his head, I've got the one true God. I'm got the God that we won the battle against the Ethiopians. Amen. Glory to God. We are the example. 
We ought to be sending people into Israel saying, go home into uh, Israel and preach the temple, or whatever they would do. Get right with God. We're right here. Asa's living all these kings, all these, all these events. He should be known the fact that, that God is his God, and he's right. That's not the story with Asa. It's a sorry story. Now, the, uh, where were they? Now, the rest of the acts of the lion, all he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the King of Israel? And in the 27th year of Asa, the king of Judah, did Zimri reign seven days in Tarzan? And those are the, oh, I was going to say that's parenthesis. That's my own note. <laughs> Sorry. It's only getting worse. In the name of this religion. Asa. Now let's look at Asa. This is a guy who's he, man, he's got it great. The Lord said he did good in the eyes of the Lord. He conquered an entire military force in God's glory. He's gonna go slowly, slowly by by pride and by I don't want to hear it. Get you, get you, get out of my face. Oh my aching feet. That's not the way to turn. Here's seven days, one week in Tarzan. And the people were encamped against Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines. So the Philistines are stupid. We haven't heard from them in a while. But here they are. You know, every time with Saul, when Saul was doing wrong, when Saul was evil and wicked in his way, isn't how great the Philistines came into debate. Now, what we look at ourselves now, we see it. Here comes the Philistines again. What are the Philistines? They are God's punishment against Israel. Oh, Israel's doing wrong. Here comes the Philistines. David comes on the picture. David beats that Philistine giant. All right, and we get victory through David. And he's conquering the Philistines. He's destroying the Philistines. They're killing the giants by David. David's doing right by the Lord. David loves the Lord. David's long gone. Solomon's long gone. We got this religion, and here comes the Philistines again. Beware when the Philistines show up. Philistines are people that God said, hey, you're not doing right. Come here, guys. I'll use you. You bring that fish head God over here. I said that fish head God. You know when that Pope puts that head on his that, that hat on his head, that man, and he turns a certain way. You know that thing looks like a fish head? You know, people can only eat, eat fish on Fridays. Brings that guy all over the world. And the people that were encamped heard say, Zimai has conspired and has also slain the king. True. This is exactly what he did. Wherefore, all Israel made Amri, the captain of the host, king over Israel that day in the camp. So now we got two kings. We got people who went to the voting booth. They all vote for Amri. He's got better things. Don't vote for to Zimri. You got a you got a two head serpent going on here. And things with two heads don't live. And Amri went up from Gibson and all Israel with him, and they besayed Tizar. So now we're gonna have a civil war in amongst a civil war of their own people. This is a revolution. Nothing new in the Bible. And it came to pass when Zimri saw that the city was taken. He's losing. And he went into the palace of the king's house. All right. He went home. And burnt the king's house over him with fire, arson, and died. Whoa, what a great guy. We don't want you as a leader. We set this guy up. Come on, let's go get him. And he burns the whole place over his head. That's an arsonist, suicidal person. Seven days. One week. Why? For his sins, which he sinned, and doing evil in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> Why? Look at that last sentence. And walking in the way of... These people are not getting right. They are destroying in the name of jihad. They're destroying the name of inquisition. They are destroying in the name of re, uh, re, religious battle and war. And we're, oh, those golden calves, aren't they just so great? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on here. Wait a minute. Jeroboam worshiped those golden calves, correct? What did those golden calves do to Jeroboam? Absolutely no protection at all. He died in battle. 
Basia. Oh, those golden arches. Aren't they just so great? Did those golden calves protect Basia? No. Elah. Oh, the religion of my father. Did they protect Elah? No. Jehu. I mean, excuse me, Zimri. Oh, the golden religion. All right. It sure didn't protect him. The result of his life is he's an arsonist, suicidal. But he held on to the religion that made God angry. You know where he is today? He's burning in hell. You know where a lot of people that follow the religion of Jeroboam into A.D.? They're in hell. There are people in India today that worship live cows. They don't need to be statues, but they've got statues. And they're one of their lives. They're in the streets dying of hunger, and yet there goes a hamburger. And then they come to America and put all oh, these starving children on TV. Like you, that actor or actress, which you're an actor or actress, I ain't going to trust you in the first place. With all the money you got, I don't see you helping them out. And in the pictures you show me, I see hamburger walking right by. I ain't going to give you money. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri and his treason Didn't God tell him to go do what he did? How did it become treason? Because he did what God told him to do, but he followed that religion. Basha became a murderer because he clung on to the religion. Zimri became into treason because he hung on to that religion. God said, go in there, destroy them all, but don't hold to the religion. God is trying to bring these two nations back together, and that religion is separating them. Remember how the religion started with Jeroboam? Oh, people are going to go down to Jerusalem. They're going to go down there, going to worship God, and they're going to go against me, and I'm going to be dead, and I've got to come up with something that people won't go to Jerusalem no more. And how many generations now do we still have that religion? Let's not go to Jerusalem. And for Israel, it's pulling them more and more and more and more away from God. You wonder how many families right now, since Jeroboam, are now involved with this religion. And branching it out to other divisions and other offshoots of the main religion. I mean, don't worship the, the, the golden calves. We got the golden bull. We got the golden goat. We got all kinds of things. Well, we didn't take part of that. We, we started our own church. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri and his treason that he wrought, are they not written in the books of the Chronicles of the King of Israel? These people are not living very long. In one chapter of the book, how many kings have we gone through? And Asa's sitting down there like, wow, what trouble up there? And going to the temple and serving the Lord until he gets prideful. You imagine him going to the temple and hearing this news and saying, oh, Lord God, I'm thank you, you're my God. Until he starts getting pride. Until he starts taking the gold out, out of the temple. Then were the people of Israel, north, divided into two parts. <laughs> You're already divided into two parts from Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Now you just broke yourself into two more parts. Well, what's that? You ready? You ready? You want me to say it or you want me to just keep going? We're one nation under God. We're the United States of America. But well, we got Republicans, we got Democrats. That's it is right there. Two, two parts. I want just two parties. Half of the people followed Tim Nye, the son of Guinness. That's maybe the Republican or Democrat. I don't know. And to make him king, and half followed Amram. That's the Republican or Democrat. I mean, you put whoever. They got two parties there, and they're arguing. That's what we're doing right now, up to up to Tuesday, when we find out who wins. They're not even. A united nation together under one ruler. We got our people, they got their people. We got our people, they got their people. Our people are better than your people, and their people are better than that people. There it is. Nothing new under the sun. But the people that followed Amri prevailed against the people that followed Timnai, the son of Ginneth, and <coughs> so Timnai died. 
That's remarkable. How did he die? The Bible records this man died because he didn't get the popular vote. It doesn't say God was involved. It doesn't say if he did it himself and Amri reigned. Now we're going to get into some serious wickedness and trouble. We're going to stop right there. Because the next part of this chapter is very interesting. But you thought it was bad now? It only gets worse from this point on. So we're going to stop right there.